Hey guys, it's Adam from K2 Home Tech here. Today I wanted to show you the difference between the Philips Hue light strips and the aftermarket DIY light strips. You can buy the pieces for them put together yourself. Today I'm going to be showing you three different light strips plus the Philips Hue light strip and we're going to be using on the other light strips is this Cladopto C008 RGB CCT uh, LED strip controller and you'll get to see that function along with the LED from Philips Hue. So stay tuned. We also have a giveaway coming up, so stay tuned to the end of the video for that as well. Okay, so everybody knows the Philips Hue light strip, and that is this one right here. It is a two-meter light strip. It's this one. It's a two-meter light strip. It costs about $80 comes with a controller, the power supply, and the light strip kind of all in one piece here so you don't have to go worry about which you need to buy and what else you need to buy to make it work. <clears throat> now the problem with this is, for me anyway, I put this behind my TV and I have a 70 inch TV and buying the light strip and one of the extension that you can buy for $20, um, a one meter extension, only went around three sides of it, and most of it didn't even do that. It went to almost to the bottom of the, the TV, but not quite. Now, um, also my other problem with it was when I was buying a TV, these lights are not very dense, which means there's not a lot of them in here. So you, you get what they call a spotlighting effect on the wall, where you can tell where each individual LED is, and it shines against the wall. It always bothered me when you look at it kind of off on the side, you'll see LED, 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 LED. So I looked for something that was another option to do yourself. And there's a lot of different LED strips out there. Uh, these are the three main types right here. This is an IP20 RGB CCT 24 volt strip. It is five meters long. So it's three meters longer than the Philips Hue strip. IP20 means it is not waterproof. There's no silicone casing on it. And actually these I prefer myself because you can cut them easier you can connect various pieces easier and when you're trying to do like your you know behind your tv or um, under your cabinets you can snip these a lot easier use the different connectors and different extensions to go around things turn corners uh, extend it in different ways that is a lot harder to do in with a phillips hue strip um, the next one is ip65 this is the one that has a silicone casing on top of the strip. So it is um, waterproof, but it's not submersible. Um, this is probably the most common strip you see out there today. Um, most people have this one. They talk about waterproofing. This is the one they mean is IP65. Then you can go up to an IP67, which is this one here, which is basically the same strip, but it's just in a silicone sheath this time, kind of like the Philips Hue is. Um, this one is actually submersible to three meters. I don't know that I'd actually dunk it under like in your pool or something, but theoretically you could. Um, this one has a full silicone sheathing around the outside, so nothing gets into it. Nothing gets onto the circuit board on the back. Um, absolutely waterproof and submersible. But it doesn't mean much if they don't perform, right? So that's the main part of this. I want to show you the performance of these other three versus the Philips Hue. So, I'll turn them all on. I have them all linked in here. I'll turn it all back off and I'll turn them all back on so you see them linked together. Um, so as you notice when you get into the colors, the first thing I notice is that Philips Hue likes to add some of the whites, right? So here you can see the cool white and the warm white is actually on as well as the color is. They do that uh, in the, the aftermarket controllers don't. So we'll get into, I'll move this around the wheel here so you can see how it responds and in the colors that it, it comes up with. Now we're down by green, back around to yellow, and then on to orange. We go back over to purple again. Okay, so you see they're pretty comparable as far as the colors go. Um, you know, the LED chip manufacturers are different, so they're going to be a little bit different 
shades of colors, and depending on which, where you pick, pick it on the wheel. Excuse me. Another main difference on this is, is the aftermarket typically have 50-50s for the RGB, which means it's 5 millimeters by 5 millimeters, and then the 2835s for the whites, which is a 2.8 millimeters by 3.5 millimeters. Where Philips Hue, I believe, uses 1428s for the whites, and then a 2835 for the colors. I could be wrong on that, but I think that's what they do. They use a little bit smaller ones. Now these are all 24 volt, which means you need to have a 24 volt power supply as well as a controller, such as this one. It does 12 or 24 volts. Now it also, being CCT, it has the. Oop, let me lock these back in again. They came out for some reason. There we go. Being that this is CCT, it will do both the cool white and the warm white together. Now, it's really hard to show these on a camera because once you turn them on and they all get bright, uh, the camera tends to overcompensate for it. So, I'm trying to do the best I can with these to just give you an idea. When you go actually all the way to cool, all the way to warm white on this one, um, Phillips has the warm white on and then they also add a bit of red in there to get a really deep Kelvin on it. Where the other ones, you can tell, they only have the warm white LED lit on it right now. Now if we switch it back over to cool white, Phillips has a little bit of green into there as well. Where these are only the cool whites that are on. Now we have some examples of some brightness differences. So we did it against the whiteboard so you can see how different the, the brightness is. And they're actually pretty close. These are the the aftermarket ones are a little bit uh, a little bit brighter, but there are also a little bit more LEDs on them. And remember, I was telling you there's there's you get the spotlighting effect with the Philips Hue when you take one of these other ones and let's put it up against this one here. You get almost three LEDs where you only get two on the Philips Hue, so you're going to get a better density on it, so you get a little better. Uh, spread of light when you have it up closer to something. Obviously further away doesn't matter as much, but up close it does make a difference. And then I'm also going to put up some pictures that are going to show the color. I have it on my television, uh, the IP65 strip, this one, and I'll put some pictures up right here that show the color differences. So we'll have uh, green. I'll just show you how close to hue they match. We have a green we have a red, and then we follow that up with a blue. We also have a white in there too. <clears throat> so now you notice on the white that it matched the bulb pretty good, but when you look at these strips, it doesn't look like it matches that well. So what I do uh, from my own setup in my living room, where I have Philips Hue bulbs, and then I have these Gladopto uh, controllers with these LED strips, what I do is I kind of redo the whites. Like reed is one that I use all the time in the scenes uh, for our everyday lighting. So because the, the LED strip didn't match on white, what I did was I manually set the LED strip to match the Philips Hue bulbs and then I resaved it as reed again. So now I can still say, hey, Google activate reed in the living room and it'll turn on and all the lights will match the same colors. So when you see that white one, that's what I had to do is match them physically on the wheel here and then save it again. Uh, so I'm also going to put up another couple ideas I have. All right, I'm also going to put up another picture here of a setup I use in my living room for game day. Obviously, I'm outside of Chicago, so I like to uh, a Bears fan. So I turn my television and all the lights in my house basically on Bears game color. So it's, it's navy and it's orange. Uh, so I put orange around the television and navy lights. Um, it's really kind of cool. I like it for the games. Uh, it's another idea to do as well for you to do it in your house, whatever your favorite team is. Um, so the benefits to using these, let me just go over to price real quick. This controller, the retail price on this controller is about $30. These strips, they go anywhere from 30 to about 40 bucks as opposed to the Philips Hue, and they're all five meters, and the Philips Hue is everything in one for 80, but it's only two meters long. So if you were to do a five meter strip with this, it would end up costing you about 160 for the three extensions, I'm sorry, 140 for the three extensions, and the $80 light strip plus. So if you're looking to save any money on a longer run, these are the better way to go, I think. 
All right, this other picture I have to show you is this light strip here. It's an IP20. This one I put up on top of the kitchen cabinets uh, in his house. So I'll show you a picture of those. It gets pretty bright. I have them set on a 45 degree LED strip channel, so it's facing basically away from the, the cabinets back up into the into the corner of the of the, of the wall. Um, just because when we laid it out, we tried different positions before we laid it straight. We put it at a 45 back. When we laid it straight, it has a 120 degree beam angle, so it shines out into the room more than we really wanted. So we um, I put it on a 45 degree strip, so it'll it'll angle it back into the wall, and it gives you a nice indirect light on things. Uh, and again, plenty bright on this. You know, this is rated at on uh, cool white. I believe it's 2,700 lumens. I have the the listings on the. Um, or I have the ratings on the listings. And I'll put links to the, those listings in the description down below. Um, <clears throat> but I just wanted you guys to get an idea of what these are, what they're capable of. And we have another video on how to actually set them up. So, you know, check that one out if you're interested. All right, this is the test to show you the brightness in a mostly dark room here at night. Uh, first up is the Philips Hue. This is in red. And you can see how well it lights up the room. I'll turn that one off and turn on the IP, oops, sorry, the Philips Hue again. This is to show you how dark the room is. This is at night. Let's turn the Philips Hue off right now and turn on the IP20. So you get an idea of the comparable brightness of it. And go over to the IP65. And then over to the IP67. And this is to show you the, the brightness of the strips and, and how bright they are compared to the Philips Hue. And I'll turn them all on on white. Turn on just the Philips Hue on white. Now we go over to the IP20. The IP65. And finally, the IP67. So you see they're plenty bright for a room. They actually do light up a room really nice. It is a mostly dark room. There's a little bit of ambient light left, but then all four of them turned on. You can see them on now on warm white, and then back over to cool white. So they are really, really bright lights for being LED strips. The Philips Hue on warm white, the IP20, the IP65, IP67. The camera doesn't pick it up real well. It tends to kind of wash it out and comp. And then for the giveaway, um, I like to, every time I do a video, I like to give away some of these products. So I'm going to give away um, one of these light strips, not the Philips one, but. One of these and then the, the complete setup. So I'm going to give a power supply, the uh, LED strip, and the controller. So you, all you have to do is tell me which one you like, the IP20, the IP65, or the IP67, because that's the one I'll, I'll send you. Um, and like the comment, subscribe to the channel, or sorry, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, in two weeks. So I think that's going to be roughly, roughly February 6th, it's Saturday. Uh, in two weeks, I'll pick a winner, and uh, we'll get one of these mailed out to you. If we get a lot of responses, I might just pick two, so or three. I'm not sure yet. So at least one, though, for sure. But pr maybe two, maybe three. We'll see. <laughs> but thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, have a good night, and uh, thank you.